Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema by Laura Mulvey is written in 1973 and published in 1975 in the highly acclaimed British film theory journal Screen. Mulvey's work is highly influenced by the theories of Freud and Lacan, thereby influencing the perspective of film theory towards a more psychoanalytic framework. Her scholarship was the first to mesh together the three concepts of film theory, psychoanalysis, and feminism. In fact, her essay uses Freud and Lacan's concepts as political weapons. She also argues that the classical Hollywood cinema assumes that the viewer is masculine, matching up with the male protagonist and always places a female into the position of desire. Visual Pleasure argues that there needs to be new filming strategies that incorporate many feminist methods in order to end the male-centric Hollywood system that provides narrative pleasure to men alone. The Sexism of Film At the crux of Mulvey's thesis is her belief that mainstream Hollywood cinema is an inherently sexist enterprise. She condemns that female characters are fetishized, objectified, and positioned only in relation to male characters. To support this point, Mulvey uses Marilyn Monroe as an example highlighting the ways in which certain aspects of her body were filmed solely to evoke eroticism and desire in the male viewer. From a psychoanalytic perspective, Mulvey also suggests that female characters are symbolically castrated and are portrayed solely in the wake of this castration. They are guilty, anxious and unable to receive pleasure. Mulvey considers and chastises Hollywood as the creator and perpetrator of sexist cinematic tropes. As she provides examples after example, this becomes very evident, yet Hollywood holds a greater symbolic position representing the ways in which gender inequality becomes enshrined in institutions. Through various practices such as screenwriting and cast females in, in passive roles, the status quo was created in Hollywood. This is not limited to Hollywood alone. Distinct patterns occur along similar lines lines in workplaces, domestic spaces, even politics that foster discrimination and gender imbalances. While Malvi writes of cinema and Hollywood in particular, her theories can be expanded into wholly different settings and circumstances. Film as a source of pleasure. As the title of the essay suggests, Her definition of pleasure, however, is not merely a matter of fun or entertainment, but a deeper psychoanalytical experience with associations to desire and fantasy. She indicates that this experience of pleasure is linked to scopophilia, the voyeuristic pleasure derived from viewing others as objects, and the narcissistic relationship the viewer forms with characters on screen. This is not to suggest that Malvi does not see simpler senses of pleasure in film, such as entertainment and humor, but she seeks a more complex understanding. Marilyn Monroe Mentioned in numerous instances throughout the essay, Marilyn Monroe is the hallmark symbol of Malvi's theorization of the female character. Renowned for her beauty, Monroe became an international sex symbol. This was harnessed by film directors who sought to display her body in a way that would attract film viewers. In doing so, they created flat, passive characters for Mandra that would act primarily as recipients for male characters and male spectators' desires. As a result, the visual pleasure of Mandra's character enacted no influence of the plots of narrative cinema. She became merely an object to be admired and fetishized rather than an active, dynamic character. The case of Munro is extreme to the degree that her beauty was converted to cinematic pleasure. However, she perfectly embodied what Mulvey finds problematic about Hollywood cinema.
On a macro level, cinema itself acts as a symbol. As Malvi briefly identifies, part of what makes cinema pleasurable is the extent to which the spectator is able to relate to what occurs on screen. Subconsciously, the spectator constantly makes comparisons between their lives and the plot that unravels before them. In this sense, cinema is a symbol of human potential and human desire. Cinema is beauty as its evident appearance. It is daring and dashing characters saving the world from disaster. It is beautiful people living successful lives. The limits of what can exist in film are almost non-existent. Cinema is a symbol of our hopes and wishes and achievements, whether they be real as documentary or fabricated as fiction. The Power of the Director Malvi does not suggest that sexist cinematic tropes have emerged organically. Rather, she looks at specific films and directly names directors. Analyzing Sternberg, Hitchcock and their respective films, Malvi gestures towards the ways in which the directors place male desire, voyeurism, fantasy and eroticization at the center of their work. In this sense, the role of the director is an incredibly powerful one. They decide not only what the spectator sees, but how they see it, and further the trends and tropes that will emerge in cinema. As their work is done behind the scenes, they are so often not held accountable for the implications of such work. By addressing these directors directly, Malvi intends to hold them accountable for their sexist practices and in the process change the course of cinema. The Relevance of Psychoanalysis Writing in 1973, Malvi bases her approach on the psychoanalytic practice devised and developed by Sigmund Freud. Instead of looking to contemporary theory, Malvi reaches half a century into the past. In doing so, she implies that Freud's theories have continued relevance not only in the field of psychology, but in broader fields such as film studies and gender studies. Symbolic Castration for those that have not encountered the symbolic connotation of castration, Malvi's use of the word may appear confusing and unsettling. When Malvi speaks of women that have been castrated, she is not suggesting that they have physically had their genitalia removed. Rather, she is referencing the work of psychologists such as Freud and Lacan, who spoke of symbolic castration in several senses. As Malvi suggests, Women are without the male sex organ, and this perpetuates an imbalanced gender relation. If the penis is associated with power and dominance, it is removed or castrated from the female and therefore leaves her in a subservient position. This is the entire basis of Malvi's theorization of the female character, and therefore a sound understanding of symbolic castration is integral to understanding her theory. In addressing blame for the state of sexist Hollywood cinema, Malvi does not look to directors like Hitchcock and Sternberg alone. She also chastises the film studies discipline for its lack of rigor in applying psychoanalysis to their thesis. As she says, prior work only speaks castration and nothing else. Therefore, Malvi's writing is not just a response to Hollywood but her fellow academics and contributors to Screen Magazine.